up everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel chess doctor here with another banger and in today's episode of chess review i'm going to show you one of the craziest if not the craziest game that i have ever played okay so the lore behind this is that my subscriber Totally Svok reached out to me yesterday saying that I inspired him to play Blitz because before this he would just play Rapid. So of course I had to challenge him for a match of Blitz to give him a nice little introduction and we actually played three matches but this one is just something like uh, outwardly okay guys this is like crazy i never played anything like this and this was just like a, a very very wild and chaotic game so sit back relax and enjoy this crazy game that happened to me so let me start so see i played with the white pieces i have crazy accuracy of 94.7 uh, let me tell you uh, this subscriber he's 1200 in rapid he's around 700 in blitz because he just started out so you know rating difference is definitely here uh, but i actually have a little bit more accuracy he also has a great accuracy of 84.6 because this game was like i don't know 50 moves long no 37 37 which is my favorite number okay guys uh, so we played a 37 move game. I started with e4, uh, but he knows that I love playing the Italian. He knows me, so that's why he decided to go with d5 and play the Scandinavian defense, which is something that I usually encounter uh, whenever I play uh, e4. So I took that up and he takes with the queen. I develop my horse on f3, he goes with horse to f6, and here I go d4. Uh, I was thinking like maybe I can go with bishop to f2 pre to prevent this check that usually happens when I play against the Scandinavian, uh, but uh, that is usually a forced move, so why do it until you're forced to do it, okay? Maybe he actually won't do it, so I don't have to put my bishop here. Maybe my bishop will have other places to go, so that's why I decided to go d4, which is a book move. I'm surprised by that because I truly didn't know that part of theory, okay? So here go uh, he goes with uh, developing his other knight to c6, and I develop mine on c3, attacking this queen and asking her politely, please queen, move somewhere else, we don't want you in the center, okay? So queen moves all the way back to d8, to the starting square, which is a good move, and here... I, I developed this bishop now on a better place, which is b5, pinning this knight to the king. Okay, guys? Uh, so he goes e6, which is an excellent move. And here I take my time to castle up and go with my king to safety. Uh, so he goes bishop d7, of course, which is an excellent move because this is no longer pinning the knight to the king. So the knight can now move around freely. Okay, guys? So I go with d5, attacking this, which is the best move. I'm surprised now. <laughs> I mean, I, uh, I like looked over the review yesterday, but uh, I literally forgot about half of the things that happened. So I go with this to like attack the horse. And of course, he's going to take with this e6 pawn. Uh, but now I have this uh, rook check, <clears throat> which was like the whole point of pushing d5. Okay, guys, so that the king gets open and that we force this move bishop to e7, uh, which blocks this rook check, okay? So after this, uh, I go with my queen on e2. Uh, they're saying that the position is pretty much equal. I was just trying to put more pressure here on this file uh, and like make my opponent castle up, which he did and which is a complete blunder in this position. I mean, honestly, I wouldn't even see it as well. Like, if I was in this position as black and somebody did this, I would also castle up. But castling up in this position is bad for you because uh, I can actually just take this horse, which is defending this bishop, and after you take back... I am actually winning a piece because I just won this bishop and even if you trade things up, I don't care because I am up a piece, okay guys? So this up a piece moment really, really helped me throughout the game. 
Uh, my opponent decided not to trade up, but I was like, okay, then I will, because like, what else do I have in this position? Like, no better moves than trading up those queens, especially uh, when you're up a piece, trading up is always good for you. So my opponent here takes with this rook. I have no idea why is this red. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, I wanted to uh, here to explain that uh, I traded up here like this, because I didn't want to have any back rank issues. Even though this horse is protecting this, like I want to move around my horse freely. So I decided to trade this up. And uh, after he took that back, I attacked the knight, which he didn't want to trade up like that. So I traded the knight for a knight anyways. And after this, I can actually move my knight when, wherever I want, because this pawn is actually... Uh, blocking uh, this black's rook vision so i i don't have any back rank issues also like i have this rook here so i don't care you know i'm safe and i'm sound and i'm chilling okay so after that i jump here uh, in order to attack this bishop and to put my horse on a maybe more active square which is d4 so he goes here with bishop a4 which is an excellent move because I don't know why I was thinking he is maybe like attacking this, but now I'm looking at it. It's not actually happening, but I don't know. I'm not stockfish. I can't explain every move. Okay, guys. So uh, wildness is about to come. I know that some of you all are probably wondering, like, this is just a normal game playing Scandinavian defense. What the hell are you talking about, Zappa? Well, wait, you have to be patient. Okay, guys, because wild things are about to come. So after this, I kick the bishop with b3, he goes back to d7, the best move, honestly I would never find it, but it is the best, and here I go with h3, because I definitely do not want ever in my life to have any back rank issues, okay? So now we're having a situation, horse, bishop, and a rook against a bishop and a rook, okay? So it's my advantage here, because I'm up a piece, that I won in that scenario before but my opponent was strong holding until the end but look what happens next so here i move my bishop on e3 the best move because like wh what else am i supposed to do i was thinking about this move here to attack this but i was like no let's actually go here maybe that's better we're blocking this pawn and we don't care we're being chilling okay guys and now take a deep breath and pay attention to what happened in this insane game. So now he kicked he kicked my horse. I move. He does b6, best move, and I move here. Uh, so I was thinking about feasting up on these pawns. That's why they, they're red. On the queen side, I really, really wanted to take them to have an even bigger advantage because, like, I am plus two, but, like, I'm still a beginner, so I don't really know how to work with that until I have, like, even more advantage. So I have really had a plan of taking up on these pawns. And look how I did it. So after this, I go with a4 uh, to like make this, uh, make this structure of my pawn so that I can push them up. Uh, but after my opponent played g5, an excellent move by black, I did 10 consecutive horse jumps. Okay? And I know that that seems very hilarious to everyone who is watching, but actually all of these moves are either best or excellent moves. So here I jump with my horse, move number one. Then we have this, move number two. Then we have this, so pay attention, I took one pawn. So here I was rotating the hell out of my horse in order to take two pawns. So I go here, which is the third, then we have the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth horse jump. Like, isn't that crazy? One horse, look at this. All of these 10 moves are night to somber. I so much love playing with my horses that I had to, like, I completely neglected this rook here. I probably could have developed him or something, but I didn't care. I just wanted to jump around with my horse. And actually, all of those horse jumps help me to gain two more pawns, which is not a little because we're getting closer to an endgame like that. And I'm 
up material so for me that's good so here i attack this pawn and i got immediately pawn on a7 after that he attacks my knight so i go here to attack the rook he attacks my knight again so i go here to rotate it and here my knight felt a little bit trapped after this so i went back to untrap him okay because like maybe your piece is trapped but if it's a horse you can maybe like go back and do something and like also this horse like horses move in an l shape which is something that is completely like different than like diagonal uh, moving or like straightforward moving so you have to like pay more attention to where the horse is looking and every time the horse moves it's looking on different spots so i feel like here i gave my opponent some nightmares uh, because this this knight was just a complete MVP here. So uh, here I unblocked him, I untrapped my horse, I went with him on e5, he attacked him again, and here I jump here, back on c4, to attack this pawn now. And I won it, because he attacked him, he, he just really wanted to trade it up. Here, he after he went with bishop e6, I knew that my opponent had a lot of nightmares from this horse. So that's why he wanted to trade it up. But I was like, no, I'm going to take this pawn, okay? So now I want two pawns by moving my same horse ten times in a row. <laughs> Which is just so crazy. And here he attacked him, so I took up this pawn as well. So I got three pawns for just like jumping around with my horse and confusing my opponent. Uh, and after that he attacked my bishop, but I just defended with b4. And here he does an inaccuracy because I feel like I just confused the hell out of my opponent with this horse. He completely like e either forgot about where this horse is going or he just was sick of this game and wanted to end it as fast as possible so he gave me a bishop and after that i also won a rook and here black resigned so guys uh this is truly the wildest game that i have ever played 10 consecutive horse jumps actually can win you a game so <laughs> here they're estimating my rating to 1500 guys 1500 is not a little that's more than double my rating and they're estimating my opponent's rating to 1150, which is around his rating, his 1200. So that's pretty much good. Like my opponent played very, very well, uh, but my horse jumps just gave him a lot of nightmares. So I'm very proud of this game. If I could, I would literally frame it and put it on a wall with the rest of the games. <laughs> uh, and this was just crazy. Like I have to show you this once again. Like. 10, literally 10, it wasn't 7, it wasn't 6 or, or 9, it's literally 10, it's a whole number. And also I took all three of these pawns by doing this, look at this. So just jump around with your horse guys and uh, you're going to confuse the hell out of your opponent like that. So I took a bishop, I took a rook and I just won a game. So uh, thank you so much Walk, for playing with me and for starting playing Blitz. I'm very glad that I inspired you and I'm very, very glad that you started doing it. So guys, if you're playing Manly Rapid, uh, try out Blitz. It's very, very fun and very crazy. You can do trickeries like this, especially if your opponents are lower on time. Just like jump around with your horse 10 times. Okay, guys, I'm, I'm having a lot of focus problems right now because somebody is calling me on the phone and I also have a bug flying around my light so I have no idea where I am I don't know I feel like I have some focus deficiency or something so guys like please don't take it like anything personally or something like I, if I say anything wrong I just have no idea where I am because my focus is all over the place okay so this is it for the game and for the video I am very happy with this game and this is like honestly one of the craziest games that I have ever performed. So please let me know in the comments down below your thoughts and feelings on this. Have you ever witnessed anyone do this to you or did you do something like this like move one piece around 10 times and won the game? 
Like, that's just crazy, okay, guys? So I definitely recommend this to everyone. Uh, guys, thank you so much for tuning in and thank you for watching my videos. If you like this video, you already know it. Give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. And um, that is it, guys. Add me on chess.com if you also want to play some games of chess with me. And... Uh, I think that is it. Everything, if all of the other informations are in the video description down below, because I really, really don't have the focus right now to say everything. So Discord, chess.com, uh, buy me a coffee, uh, chess club, all of that is in the video description. So make sure to click on that and check it out if you're interested in any of that. So guys, that is it from your chess doctor. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching this insane horse game. And uh, that is it from me. So have a nice day. Good luck with your games. Do not blunder. Do not resign. Just chill. Take your time and everything will be fine, guys. So enjoy your day or the rest of the day. And I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much for tuning in. And that is it from me. Bye bye.